Today we're doing another budget overview where I show you my real numbers and how I use a successful budget in my life. Hi, I'm Kamiko from The Budget Mom. Come along with me as I strive to live a life I love on a budget that I can afford. Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. Today we are doing another full budget overview for the paycheck that I received on January 20th. Now it's really important to remember that I am a paycheck budgeter, which means I create a budget every single time that I am paid. I, it's a budget on the 5th and the 20th, so I get paid twice a month. Now I did my fir very first budget overview for YouTube back on January 5th, and I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video so you can kind of be a little more aware of how my budget process works. So I use the budget by paycheck method and it incorporates a couple of different things. The calendar method, cash envelope method, and of course the paycheck method. So today we're going to be looking literally at every single detail of my budget, but it's also important to remember when you're watching these video overviews or these budget overviews to know and understand that your budget might look a lot different than mine. You know, you, I don't want you to feel like your categories have to be the same, the amounts have to be the same, or even your cash envelopes have to, have to be the same. Your budget is completely personal, so it might look differently than mine. The purpose of these overviews is to show you the process and the steps as well as the psychological reasons and the reasons why I'm making the decisions I'm making to run this realistic budget in my everyday life and what it really looks like behind the scenes using someone's real numbers. So let's get started on my full budget overview for January 20th. I try sharing my story to remind readers that there is a way out. That with hard work, dedication, determination, motivation, it's all about having a plan for your money. And that's what gives you the true control. Holy crap, it just changed my life. And we're like, oh man, Nico. It takes time. It takes dedication. It takes work. No more credit card debt. So this was what my budget looks like for my paycheck on the 20th. I use what's called a paycheck bill tracker. And I do one of these for every single paycheck that I receive. So here's my paycheck back on the 5th, and here's the one for the 20th. So this is the one we're gonna be doing the full budget overview. So I've broken down my income to be a little more transparent. So on the last paycheck of the month, I have a couple of different income sources. I have a paycheck from my day job or my, you know, my eight to five job. I also have income coming in um, from my boyfriend, Chris, who pays me for half the bills. And then I also have my business wage. So I do pay myself a small amount from my business to incorporate in my personal budget. So that's how I got to my budgeted amount for my income. When I'm working or calculating out my, my budget or preparing my budget for an upcoming paycheck, I like to prepare my budget a couple days in advance. I usually receive my pay stub a couple days before I actually get paid or the money hits my checking account, but I like to also do a budget based on estimated income, and I base my income off the worst case scenario, meaning the least amount I know I'm going to receive. That way I can plan out what bills I'm going to pay, what my expenses look like, and if my paycheck is more, I can decide what to do with that money when I get it. Now my paycheck, my budget really starts with the calendar method. This is my budget calendar. It literally tells me everything that I need to include in my budget for the month that I'm working in. So we're working in January. My paycheck on the 5th is highlighted in blue and everything highlighted in blue on my calendar is what I'm gonna be paying with that paycheck. My paycheck on the, the 20th is highlighted in green. I pay all of the different bills highlighted in green with that paycheck. Now you might be wondering, why am I paying a bill on the 16th with my January 20th paycheck? It's before I get paid. With this specific bill, I'm actually one month ahead. So this bill isn't technically due until February 16th. Sometimes when you're working on a paycheck budget, it's important to figure out what bills to pay with each paycheck. So it's important, it might be trial and error to get the best uh, schedule for your bills and your income, 
don't, you know, don't be so focused on keeping your bills on the same days. Call them, see if you can move the due dates, if that's possible, to work better with your pay schedule. For me, paying this bill a month in advance allows me to pay with that bill on the 20th instead of the 5th, so I have more money left over with my beginning paycheck. So it's all about trial and error, getting it to work on a pay schedule that works for it best for you. But I also include in my budget calendar my events, my holidays, and my appointments. This is literally everything that has to be included in my paycheck um, for the month of January or my different paychecks. So with this month, I listed out my regular bills. So these are the bills that have to be paid. These are what we call fixed expenses. And these are things that I pay from month to month to month that don't really change that often with um, the amounts. So obviously I have my rent, my life insurance, um, Comcast is cable and internet. So like I said, my regular bills might look different from yours, but that's okay. The most important thing to remember when you're doing a budget or a paycheck budget is to make sure that your regular bills are being paid first. Those are your priority bills that just need to be paid. So after writing all of my regular bills down, I am giving, I'm get a, a bill total. So my total bills for the paycheck on the 20th is $2,050. If I subtract that from the income that I received, I'm left with $525. Now that my regular bills are taken care of and I know that I have enough income to cover my bills, it's a matter of figuring out what to do with this leftover money. Now it's also important to know that my paycheck budgets are zero based budgets meaning every single dollar of my income is being used somewhere in my budget. Now, when I started the zero base budget, because every dollar is being spent, I was worried about my checking account getting brought down to zero every month or every paycheck. And so I started what's called a checking account cushion. $40 of every paycheck goes into my checking account cushion. It literally just sits in my checking account. It's there in case the bill is higher than expected or I have to maybe do an unplanned online um, shopping. So it's there to protect myself from overdraft fees and unplanned expenses. I like to keep about $1,000 at all times in my checking account. When it gets over $1,000, I use the excess money past that point for debt or for savings. So that's how my checking account cushion, but it's $40 every paycheck that I put towards that. So I have $525 left over for my variable expenses. This is where my cash envelopes come in. These are the cash envelopes that I'm using for this pay period. If you are ever wondering about my cash envelopes and where you can find the designs, um, all of my cash envelopes are printable. You can print them at home and make them at home. I have another video on my YouTube that shows you how to make these after you get the templates, but these I'm just using a polka dot design. But this is how I spend my variable money or my, how I pay for my variable expenses. I pay all of my regular bills online. So my, my paychecks, my income hit my checking account. I pay my bills online and then I pull out cash for the rest of my spending. I'm an all cash spender. So for my cash envelopes, I have six categories that I spend. Groceries, fun, gas, beauty, miscellaneous, and pet. And I have a cash envelope for each of those. So on payday, I run to the bank and I use what's called a cash envelope breakdown. Now this cash envelope breakdown tells me what bills I need to ask from the teller to, to stuff my cash envelopes. So I write down each of my cash envelopes, the amount I need for each envelope. And for me, what I've learned along the way on my budgeting journey is it's a lot harder for me to spend bigger bills than it is smaller bills. It's a lot harder to hand someone a $100 bill than a $10 bill. It's one of those psychological things that I've kind of just picked up along the way. So how I do it is, so for instance, groceries is $200, which means I need two $100 bills. I start with the highest bill denomination and I work my way down. So groceries, I need a $50 bill, and you do that for each one of your envelopes. Down here, there's a total bill count. So like I need one five, zero tens, four twenties, four fifties, etc. 
for down here is just the value of those dollars. So the total value of my cash envelopes is 485. I cut this out and I give, this is what I hand the teller. It's actually amazing how much easier this makes stuffing your envelopes, making sure you have the correct bill denominations for your envelopes. So I've already stuffed my envelopes, but here's how that works. Here's my food envelope, for example. For this paycheck, I'm doing $200 for groceries. Now my groceries do include food and eating out. This is my food envelope. On the back, there is a tracker. And from my last paychecks envelope, I had some, some money left over in my food envelope. I had some cash left over. I decided that I was gonna roll over $56 of my leftover cash from last time to this new envelope. So my new budgeted amount for food is 256. But I also had a lot more money left over in my cash envelope because I am currently doing the pack a lunch January savings challenge and I haven't been eating out like I normally do for my lunches. In fact, the challenge is pretty remarkable. I've actually saved a lot of money on my food expenses. So what I do is all of the cash that I decide to save from my previous envelope, cash that I had left over in my envelope, I stick in a big wad like this and I bring it down to the bank. It's pretty amazing. So all that you're seeing here is cash that I've saved since my December 20th paycheck. Since my December 20th paycheck, I was able to save over $400, $418 to be exact, just by challenging myself not to spend the cash in my envelopes. Now, some people say that means I'm over budgeting my categories. That doesn't necessarily mean that. It means that with my budget, for me, I always like to make sure that I don't feel so restricted in my categories, it gets frustrating for me, where I keep feeling like I'm failing time and time again because I'm spending my cash too quickly. And so these amounts actually I've used for years and they've worked perfectly. But be, just because you're able to save a large amount from your cash envelope doesn't necessarily mean you're over budgeting. It just means that you're challenging yourself to save more of the budgeted amount that you put for your categories. And so this is all cash that I've saved since my December 20th paycheck. I'll be running down to the bank and I'll be depositing this into, I mean, I've decided to use this money that I've saved to put towards my house savings account. So that's how I handle my rollover. Now you might be asking, I get a lot of questions, is there like a magical formula for how much I'm supposed to roll over compared to how much I'm supposed to save? There is no magic formula. For me, how I do it, I like to roll over small amounts into my, my cash envelopes for the next pay period. If I have money left over in my cash envelopes, it's, it's a matter of what's going to make me feel comfortable for my next pay period. And I do this only the small amounts. The bigger bills, like the 50s and the 20s, the whole $20 bills, I like to put towards savings or debt. So it's just a matter of, for me, it's small bills get rolled over, bigger bills get saved or used for debt. So all of my cash envelopes have been stuffed. For food, I now have $256. My pet envelope, I rolled over $20, which gives me $40. So with how this works is, I have a budget amount of $20. You can see that here. But I have to include the rollover amount that I used from my last paycheck envelopes to give me this new balance. I like to keep an updated balance of what's inside my cash envelopes at all times. That way when I go to spend money from that envelope, I know exactly how much I have to spend. That's the great thing about the cash envelope methods. It's a visual method. So my miscellaneous, I have... I budgeted $50, but I rolled over 20, which gives me a new balance of $70. Gas, I budgeted $75, but I rolled over 40, which gave me which gave me a new balance of $115. Beauty, I had I budget $90, but I rolled over 7, which gives me a new balance of $97. And for fun, 
I have $50, but I rolled over three, which gave me a new balance of $53 for my fun envelope. Now, because your budget is so personal, I get a lot of questions. How do you come up with these categories for your cash envelopes? For the cash envelope spending, it's always important to choose categories where you have a hard time overspending, where you have a hard time sticking to your budget because the whole purpose of the cash envelope method is to deter you from overspending because you can physically see how much you have to spend. Once it's gone, it's gone. So use categories that you have trouble with in your budget. You also have to start tracking your spending. So the first step in my budgeting method is tracking your spending. And the way that I track my spending looks like this. I am a manual person for my personal finances. I do not like using electronic apps or programs for my finances because I really don't feel it gives you the same psychological benefits and you don't register the same things compared to writing it down pen to paper. So I manually track my expenses using the highlighter method. And I'll put a link to more detail on how I track my spending in the description of this video. But very quickly, what I do is I highlight specific categories. So all of my food purchases are highlighted in blue. All of my car and maintenance expenses, including gas, is highlighted in purple. All of my beauty expenses is highlighted in this bright pink color. At the top of each expense tracker, I add them up. This is how I categorize my spending. This is what makes your budget personal and realistic to what you're truly spending your money on. That's how you come up with the categories for your budget, where your money is actually going in your everyday life. So I decided here are my cash envelopes. If I subtract that from the 525 that I had left over after paying my bills online, I'm left with $40. So now I have my bills taken care of, my variable expenses taken care of, and I still have $40 left over. For me, I decided to put that $40 into my car maintenance fund. So usually for my car maintenance fund, I like to do $20 from each paycheck, but I did not include it on my budget last time because I decided to take care of my sinking funds for this first budget on January 5th. So I like to save a little bit every month for specific events or holidays, so I have cash available and I don't feel pressured to use my credit card when these types of expenses come up. So my um, sinking funds might look different than say something you want to save for. Maybe your sinking funds include, you know, a house maintenance account. I don't own a house, I'm in an apartment, so of course that wouldn't apply to me. So that's how my sinking funds work for my paycheck on the 5th. And I have, like I said, I did my full budget overview for my January 5th paycheck on YouTube as well. So I'm not making any extra debt payments um, with this paycheck. And as you can see, a zero base budget is income minus expenses should equal zero. Down here, I give you the formula for that. My income minus my regular bills minus my envelopes minus my savings plan equals zero. zero. Every dollar of income has a plan somewhere in my budget. So this is my full budget overview for January 5th. Um, if you have any questions on this, make sure you um, head over to TBM Family, my private Facebook group. We talk a lot about my budget overviews and my morning videos on Instagram. Um, but essentially, the, and I'll put links to all these different things um, in the description of this video if you're wondering a little bit more about the different sheets that you're seeing. I'm using the 2019 Budget by Paycheck Workbook worksheets, um, and I'll put a link to that as well. It's just really important that before you create a paycheck budget, you are aware of where your spending is actually going, where your money is actually going, because until you know this, until you are aware of where it's going, you can't actually create your budget. It's really important to get these personal, realistic categories written down. So head over to TBM Family if you have any more questions. If you found this video helpful, please share it and don't forget to subscribe.